Hello everyone, this is Paranormal Mike, and welcome to Season of 12 Colours. Now, um, I looked at the reviews, and this is sort of like a, um, a visual storybook kind of thing. So it's a very different kind of gameplay that I've ever played. Um, it was in the Steam sale, and it was one one pound ninety nine, I think. But let's just get into it and see what it's all about. It just looked really pretty, so... Prologue, I guess. <gasps> the way it was, just like it is now, on a bright, bright summer day. Yeah, hello. That's a promise, right? The girl in a white dress asked. Sunny sky, a paper plane slid across it, sliding on blue winds. Am I clicking? Yeah, okay. I was waiting for something to happen, but nothing happened. For summer vacation, I had to come to my uncle's house in the country. Life here was so much easier. With the high school entrance... No, wait. With the high school entrance exam just ended, it's like a huge burden had been lifted away all of a sudden. Huh. Holiday. Long as I dream, free of homework. Couldn't get much more blissful. I stretched out and lay down on the grass. Put myself in the most comfortable position possible. Then again, there was a downside. I wasn't exactly thrilled, having found nothing much to play with here. No access, no access to internet or computers, only a handful of channels available on the TV. Welcome to the countryside. And all those five, six, seven year olds in the neighbourhood? How was I supposed to play with them? That was how I ended up rolling around on the grass. The soft grass and its scent rubbed against my cheeks and ears, feeling tickly and cool. Sigh. Didn't feel like getting up. Sunbeams streamed through branches and leaves. Everything was draped in sunshine. It suddenly didn't seem to be a bad idea to sleep away the whole summer like this. Oops, I opened, opened a uh, system by mistake. <laughs> Even the wind smelled fresh and nice. And then, the sun was blocked. I was cast into the shade. When I opened my eyes, I saw before me a wide-brimmed straw hat, a pair of big, big eyes. Looking down at me with great interest, there was a young girl in a white dress. Yeah. Hello. Nice to see you again. Again? Have we met before? To be continued! <gasps> Already? Oh, chapter one. The sun had been exceptionally bright that summer. It was just before the hottest hour of noon. I was relaxing under a tree, trying to enjoy the cool shade for a moment. That was how I met the girl. Yet, yeah, there's more to it. I sure had met her somewhere else before. And what? What was her name? Shmolia. Name's Jasmine. Wide brimmed straw hat, pure white dress, in the beautiful summertime sunshine. The girl smiled when she told me her name. Ah, now I could recall it. I did meet her, last time when I came to my uncle's house. Her name was Jasmine. She was a girl living in the neighbourhood, about the same age as me. Finally, you do remember me now, don't you? Her voice was full of glee. Such a long, long time since then. She wandered around in dance, like steps, turning a bit in circles. But there was still something. It seemed to me she hardly changed at all after all these years. Or wait, did she even grow? Shorter? I made fun of her for this. Hmm, that was totally nonsense. Jasmine pouted and stomped lightly. I had tried my best to grow taller. How could you say that? And then, she added, Just because you're a boy, doesn't mean you have the right to grow this tall. I had to admit, I was a bit too tall for my own good. The year I entered junior high, I had reached 175 centimeters. Now I guess I was well over 180. Back then, I had been the, the one reaching for what all of you couldn't. But IRL, I'm sure AF. <laughs> Wait, what was that? Something emerged in a flash and faded away. Come, come, let's play together. Jasmine skipped in front of me and looked up. 
Excuse me, how old were you? The way her eyes lit up with the word, play, made her look like a child, very, very young. Myself? I was not one to judge, though. But talking of together, was there anyone else here that could play with us? I asked her. Uh, no. Mm, no one, really. It, ha it had always been just the two of us. Those huge eyes flickered as she answered my question. Hmm. So my memory tricked me, yet I still felt like there had been. Someone. A child, a little younger than both of us. What? Oh, it's shaking. What happened there? Whoa, 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 whoa. Jasmine jumped with a start. She grabbed my hands hastily, and then before I could protest, I was dragged into a bush. Hey, what's wrong? I almost shouted out loud. But Jasmine had put a finger against her lips, shaking her head, a gesture for me to keep quiet. What's going on? Clueless, I looked into the direction where she was looking. There were no tigers or bears that, that happened to walk by, not even agricultural trackers, whatever that word is. Just a bunch of kids, seven, eight year olds, chattering, they ran off. <sighs> huh. The kids went out of sight. The girl beside me let out a sigh in great relief. Hey, don't tell me you had to hide from them. Just a bunch of kids. <laughs> Jasmine came back out on her hands and knees. She looked a bit embarrassed when she put her hand on her straw hat to keep it from falling. What do you mean, yes? Had she not been such a little girl, I would have flicked her on the forehead. How come she gets so scared by kids so much younger than herself? Couldn't believe it. I'm, I'm sorry. Jasmine apologised timidly. I just... I can't get used to crowded places. She stole glances at me, her voice trailed off. Sigh, I put down my hand. How old were you again? And even for those kids, simply making friends with them would be fine. It would have been so easy. Hey. Jasmine kept silent while listening to my preaching. Only after I finished, she spoke almost in a whisper. Friends. Her head lifted. I only had one friend. She smiled softly, a faint blush colouring her cheeks. Chapter 2 A summer day, just like it always had been. The sun was so bright, Sisadas, Kikadas wouldn't stop singing. I'm guessing that's some kind of foreign bird that is not in the UK. <laughs> Oh! What happened? <gasps> the sky moved a little bit, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Did we zoom in a little bit? I think we zoomed in a little bit there, I don't know. I hurried home to finish my lunch, and then had to run here again in a rush. Just ask me whose fault it was. Come here, come here! The girl waving at me, her name was Jasmine. She lived nearby and was about the same age as me. Without many other friends to play with, she usually just followed me around. Even on such a scorchingly hot summer's noon, there's no exception. The drowsiness started to sink in after I had lunch. All I wanted was to take a nap. By the way, had it not been her saying, you have to come, I have something nice to show you, there's no way I would have come out under the blazing sun, as if I had nothing better to do. I did, did wish they would, she would tell me how much further we had to walk. For some reason, the scenery felt completely unchanged to me. Were we just going round and round in circles? This was like the first scene that it showed, right? Jasmine looked back at me and smiled. She had been leading us around in the woods, skipping and ducking to get through. We were almost there. The moment her words reached me, the view expanded before us. Oh, ripples! <gasps> Yo, look at the flowers. I never knew there was a place like this within the woods. The air was filled with the sweet scent of wild flowers and grass. A wide clearing. The sky was merely a circle, surrounded by a grove of trees, covering everything like a dome. And just like in the fairy tales, in the middle of the clearing, there stood a little wood house. <laughs> right here. Jasmine turned around. 
This is my secret base. Her face brightened up as she introduced me to her great treasure. It's totally zooming in, right? I don't know, I'm really freaking out. <laughs> First of all, she had found this place. For this I had to give her credit. Having come into the woods quite a few times, I didn't even know it existed. And then... Oh! I don't know what that's supposed to be! I couldn't help but wonder what the girl was doing in there. With it's too messy inside, I need to clean it up. She dived into the house. Then there came the suspicious noises. Anything wrong? You need help? Just what is this all about? What? Jesus. <laughs> A loud clatter. First the straw hat, then the girl. All fell out together with a huge pile of books. Snow crashing out the door. Hey, are you okay? Oh, not again. She dug her way out of the mountain of books, dusted her straw hat and put it back on. Jasmine seemed so innocent when she looked at me. But I had to ask, just what were these beautifully bound hard-covered bricks of books with gibberish written all over them? Those are Dad's books, she told me. We don't have enough space at home, so we just moved them here. So, I got it now. Judging from the volume we have here, I really looked forward to visiting the inside of the house. Grumbling to myself, I had no choice but to help Jasmine pick up the books. They were all over the place. Hey, where should these go? Just put them in the corner over there. I had to watch my steps in their narrow space, hugging a pile of books. Books filled the house, all the way up to the ceiling. Between stacks of books, there was barely room to walk. If I hadn't been careful, think about what just happened to Jasmine. Couldn't help but shiver. Huh. After a prolonged struggle, he managed to almost finish putting the books back into order. Now let's see what's left. Let me put these inside. Oh, those are fine. You could just leave them here. Jasmine smiled and took them. They are my books. Oh. You do read. How surprising, I stared at her dorky face. <laughs> what? Of course I read. Will you please stop making a fool of others? Jasmine pouted and protested. Sure, sure. I brushed her off, sitting onto the wooden doorsteps. I grabbed a book to fan myself. <laughs> hey, I really did read them. <laughs> what about, about this one? She sat down heavily beside me and brought with her a thick book. That's really something, really. By the way, it was a book of fairy tales for kids. Mm. Yes, so? Oh, what, they spelled opened wrong. Uh-oh. If they see this, they should fix that. When I opened up the book, Jasmine leaned in closer. These stories are wonderful. I got it. So you're a kid. Like, that's new, and you were getting too close. It's getting hot. Let's see. We have here Mr. Rabbit, Mr. Aunt Goose, and... Halfway into her enthusiastic talk, Jasmine paused. Her eyes widened, and her head tilted. What were those torn edges? The page looked as if it had been bit by rats. Oh, it's... When I was little... I tore off a piece of paper from the page to make a paper plane. Could be something like that. <laughs> she scratched her head. Didn't look that guilty either. You know what? Mr. Rabbit will cry a river over this. I made a semi-serious face and with great pity inspected the rat's work. You're right. She seemed to be thinking about it. Please accept my apologies, Mr. Rabbit. Wait, was she serious? Seriously agonising over this? What can I do for you? Hmm. Hey, I was just kidding. Don't look like you're about to get into that book. Alright, I got it. I swiftly snatched the book from her hands. The girl was left grasping at air for a split second. Hey, how about this? I stood up, having mischievous ideas. Jasmine looked at me, puzzled. Let's tear it all up! What do you think? I had to look like I was really about to tear the book. My words finally registered. Jasmine jumped with a start. You you can't do that! Be, besides, 
Why, why, why would you want to do anything like that? Jasmine was desperate to get the book back. Unfortunately, even as she extended her arm, it was still shorter than mine. There was no way she could reach the book. I had been holding over my head. Oh, you asked why I was doing this? I hadn't decided that yet. It was just a little prank, but it was so much fun messing around with her. I couldn't help but want to play bad guys some more. Look, hiding the book behind me, I started to invent random excuses. You see, Miss Rabbit was on the plane, right? I turned in circles. Jasmine followed around. So you know what? Wouldn't it be a great idea to make the rest of the book into paper planes as well? Miss Duck, Aunt Goose, whoever. That way they could all meet with Mr. Rabbit again. I held the book high up above my head. <laughs> hey! Wow, she jumped up. To reach the book in my hand, Jasmine practically threw herself at me. I tried to dodge, but it was too late. That was miscal um, miscalculation. A young girl got me, but I had only myself to blame. I asked myself if I was doing too much. At the same time, just when I was about to get up, the sound of our foreheads touching, her skin felt cool. I opened my eyes. What? <gasps> we were so close, our noses were almost touching. Jasmine bounced away. So, so sorry. Hugging the book, she apolog apologised in a fluster. Come to think of it, I was the one that need to examine my faults. My heart was being unreasonably fast. I got up from the grass, trying to ignore it. But you know, she held out the book so tight, as if afraid I would take it away again. You just don't tear books, do you know that? She said. That's not what I expected to hear from someone who bit it like a rat. There was no rat. I was to be expected her puffed out cheeks was so much fun to look at. It was just, when I was little I was, her voice became smaller, too naughty, that was all. In the glow of the setting sun, the girl blushed apologetically. And whatever you say, it's just not right to tear books. Okie dokie, I promised her and thought, perhaps it was time for dinner, uncle must be waiting for me. If, if you really like to make a paper plane, she looked very serious when she said this, emphasising each word. You could use other paper. Of course she was right. It's time for me to go. You should go home as well. When I said this, in the light of the setting sun, there was a look on her face. It only lasted for a brief moment. After that, she gave me a big smile. See you tomorrow, Mr. Rabbit. I answered with, see you, and stepped into the pathway. Wait, since when did I become Mr. Rabbit? To be continued. We will continue on to chapter 3 next time. And I will see you all in the next episode. Bye bye.